Hi there. Well, welcome to part three of Can I Salvage This Lister Engine? It's only supposed to be two parts, but I found a crack in the bottom. So, one way or another, we're either going to fix it and get it running, or it's going to get trashed. And uh, my name is Joe, and I probably figured that out from the <laughs> channel name. So, here we are. Uh, this has been a really long project. I bought this engine in a uh, light tower probably five or six years ago, and now that I'm sort of retired, I'm getting back to working on this stuff. And I just, as I said in the last clip, didn't even dawn on me that it may, might be cracked from freezing. So we're going to go through that today. Uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to turn you over to where this is and point out a couple of things. So first of all, I'm going to clean it. But when I was filling it, it started leaking. And sure enough, plain as day, and I should have seen it before, there's a crack from here all the way over to here. So, is it cast iron or cast steel? I don't know that yet. I'm going to do the test that I've seen online. Um, I have to drill a hole in the ends of the crack anyway. I'll see what the metal looks like. I'll take a grinding wheel to some of this and see if I where the sparks go. Uh, either way, I'm probably going to braze it since it's not really under pressure. It's not going to get overly hot like an exhaust. We used to braze exhaust manifolds. So uh, it may not matter, but what does matter is I have to get it absolutely as clean as possible. So with that in mind, I'm going to start scrubbing. Uh, I have some paint thinner. You can use almost anything. Uh, doing it inside, not recommended. Don't do what I do. Uh, at least it's not gasoline, although this stuff's pretty flammable. Uh, just uh, be careful. I mean, I have a ton of different cleaners, but uh, we're going to start with this. I'm going to say that this probably was never painted. This was the paint that was put on by um, Allman, A-L-L-M-A-N-D, I believe. Uh, they make the light tower. They change the color of the, of the uh, engine from green to yellow. Yellow is their favorite color, I guess. But uh, we're going to clean the whole thing inside and out then uh, get rid of this get rid of this um, dirty paint thinner and do it a second time I'm probably not going to show you the whole process I mean anybody can swing a brush Maybe not for painting, but for cleaning. I mean, it's it's not rocket science. I remember somebody saying that, and they were actually working on a rocket. And they said, well, in this case, I guess it is rocket science. Uh, but this is not. This is just plain cleaning, like you would do on any 20-year-old car or any classic car. And there is a lot of grime on it, but that's, that's to be expected. One of the reasons I'm going to try to get it as clean as possible is that I am going to preheat this. Everybody suggests that, and uh, 
it's a good sized piece so we're going to preheat it and I really don't want to sit there burning off grease and oil while I'm preheating so that's why I'm going to try to get it really pretty clean Now the inside was already pretty clean since I had to uh, change the rod bearing and you know look the engine over because of all the water and sludge that was in it. But uh, it could always be cleaner. I didn't didn't go to this extent, but we're going to. Uh, do it now. Now in hindsight, the oil pump sits in here and it's got a ball bearing in the bottom and a ball bearing a little further up. Both of them showed signs of rust. Well, what does that tell you? Well, it tells you it wasn't in oil, it was in water. So, well that's looking pretty good. I think I'll give it a rinse. few spots there it's built up. It's on the opposite side so really probably not going to heat that up too bad. All right I'm going to uh, change the uh, change the cleaning fluid and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, next step. So, when I was done with the paint thinner, paint thinner leaves a film, which is not good. So, I proceeded to take my bucket outside, my big basin, and a brush and some acetone. And I went outside because the acetone is, it's, it's a VOC. And the first thing about that is it's volatile which means it gets really smelly, it's not good for you. So I went outside in the fresh air to finish getting rid of most of the uh, paint thinner. And I may have to use some brake cleaner or something. I can see it's still a little oily down there, it looks like. But if I grind that out enough, that shouldn't be a problem. I don't know if you can see that crack. Yeah, you can see that crack. So, but I don't see any others. So that's a good thing. And you can certainly see it on this side. So there's two things I'm going to do next. Again, probably not show you on camera. Number one is on each end, I'm going to drill a hole. Um... That, even after brazing, your crack can spread if you don't stop that, apparently. So I'm going to drill a hole in each end to stop it. And that will also give me some metal chips that I can look at and see if I'm good enough to decide if they're steel or cast iron. Uh, then I will probably grind it. And you can certainly tell with a grinder if it's steel or iron. Um, I thought it was cast iron, but the finished surface looks awful good, so it might be cast steel. Um, but we'll see. I, I will just, I, I, I'll hold off judgment on it. Now is probably a good time to tell you that I'm not a pro at this. As you can tell, I'm working in my basement shop here. Um, handyman style shop. It's full of all kinds of tools. I use them once every while once in a while not nearly enough to be a pro um, I can I know enough about all of them to be dangerous <laughs> so let me uh, let me go the next step and we'll see what it takes to to knock these two out with a drill and uh, then maybe grind this well I was trying to drill from the outside but it's very hard to tell where the crack ends on the outside. 
but you could see it really good on the inside. So I don't know if this is going to focus. I'm going to try. But there's the there's the material. And I'm going to say, based on the drilling, this is cast iron. I have one more test to do, which is grinding. But I really think this is cast iron. So we'll see what I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to end up brazing this. Uh, it doesn't... It's not going to get hot. It's not going to be under pressure. The worst it is is vibration. But uh, well, I, I'm, I'm hesitant on doing welding to it. It probably could be tigged. But that's beyond my skills and my equipment. All right, you and I will see this test together. See if I can discern it. I'm gonna. I got a cutoff wheel. That's a good enough grinding wheel, I think. I'm gonna take a piece of this. I could take this. This has got some some coating to it. And we're going to see if it makes a lot of sparks close by or if they fly up. Let's see which way my wheel runs. Oh, it runs the right way. So. Sparks are out here. So apparently that is definitely cast iron. So now I have to, uh, I'm going to grind this out and uh, you're not supposed to use an abrasive wheel. You're supposed to use a cold chisel because you could put contaminants into the material since cast iron's already dirty. Uh, I uh, I suppose I could try my Dremel tool with a steel bit. I don't know how well that's going to work. And that that might be interesting. So maybe we'll see. I'm going to go get my Dremel and some bits. I have a whole bunch of dental bits. Uh, don't know how they're going to do on cast iron. Uh, if I go through a lot of them, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use them for anything else. I think there's an old pair of adjustable slip joint pliers. Her brand, number 167, made in the USA. So either I'm going to chew through these really fast and give up, or it might actually work. And that's the end of that one. I don't think this is the way to go. I said I have a lot of them, but still, I don't want to be here all day. Using 50 bits up, trying to get this ground out. I'm just barely touching the surface here.
Well, I've turned it blue, so it must be really hot. And it's still cutting, but that's, that's a lot of thickness to go through with that. So maybe I'm going to try something else. I don't know what yet. Still sharp. If it was a straight line, it would be a lot easier. I have to think about it. All right, quick update. I used my cutoff wheel, abrasive. Got through most everything, got a little too deep here. I thought it was thicker than that, but that'll fill in. I cannot get in here, this radius. So I'm going back to my little Dremel tool because for this short distance, I can certainly uh, get that out with the uh, little bits. All right, I skipped all the mundane stuff. Uh, you saw me grind it out. Then I cleaned it really good, and I mean really, really good. Uh, took it outside, cleaned it with acetone to dry it. Uh, used some wire brush, some brass bristle brushes, cleaned it all up. Um, I had built a fairly good size hole in here which is not the best thing in the world it's very hard to fill so I took some aluminum foil and jammed it jammed it in there as tight as I could put a piece of bar stock on it and clamped it with a C clamp and then I proceeded to to braze it um, regular brazing Rod, flux, flux, covered brazing, uh, brazing rod, oxyacetylene, and uh, I used one of those big um, propane uh, torches that you use to kill weeds and stuff. So, you, I mean, it's a big flame that comes out. Didn't turn it up that high, but I heated this all up to about 600 degrees. To get some heat into it, so this didn't act as much of a as much of a shock. And then I uh, used an oxyacetylene torch and got this close to cherry red in here, and and uh, got the uh, got the brazing rod in it, and it looks pretty good. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with water, and I'm going to see what comes out. I'm going to Put a nice fresh paper towel under it, and of course, I have to be careful because if I spill it before I get it in, then the paper towel is going to look wet. I don't want to shock it with cold water just yet, so I'm going to put in some pretty warm water. And of course I dripped on the end. Let's see if I can move this up a little. Now we'll move it up a little more. I 
All right, we'll let that sit overnight and see what happens. So I can talk loud and that way there you'll actually get something. Um, we just picked up the bottom is all brazed. I flushed out the engine with some diesel fuel. Looks really filthy. Now I'm hanging a diesel tank. Whoops. And now I'm bleeding my diesel, my fuel lines. That's one. And We checked that we had oil pressure. I put a meter across my fuel pump line on the pressure switch. And the fuel filter is full. Oh, I don't like that. It's still tightening. Ah, I think the gasket died. That's a bummer. And there's a switch on the side for fuel pump. I'm going to turn that on rich. Should I turn around and come over that side? And we think it's going to run. try to bleed the fuel pump. You had a couple of puffs of smoke. This key has been sitting on here and I don't know what it goes to. I'm expecting it to the side cabinet of the light tower. Could be. Well, let's see if we get any. I think I actually broke the gasket on the fuel pump, fuel filter. Yeah, so much for that. I have to see what I got for uh... gasket material. Yeah, gasket material, or maybe some O-rings for now. I think I'll just put a couple O-rings on them, tighten them down softly. All right, we have some O-rings in that filter. I'm gonna see if I get any more than just bubbles up here. You don't think it's getting any fuel up there? 
No, it doesn't look like it's getting fuel. Ugh. All right. One. Well, we weren't getting fuel, so I pulled the side inspection plate off to make sure that the plunger was working on the pump. Pulled the fuel line off here, had plenty of fluid. This, I guess, is a bleed valve, bleeder. I took that out and got fluid there. And now it looks like I have some fluid up at the next joint. So we'll see if, in fact, if you follow run, start. This is fuel pump off, fuel pump run, fuel pump rich. So we will see. And it works. One. Well, we got it running. The shutoff works. And... The oil still looks really pretty clean, so that's good. So now we're going to see if we have power. And to do that, I have to take this back and put it to normal. And it charges the battery too. So I would say that was a success. Uh, that was a long road to hoe. I was a little concerned with all the problems I found. We have power. We have. I'm gonna put it all back together now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is only, even though this is part three, and this is now complete. Now it's gonna go back into the light tower. And I have a whole bunch more work to do to it. But for now, we're done. It's starting to rain. I got to a good stopping point. I'm going to put this all together, stick it on, on YouTube for you guys, and give you a little post talk. So that was it. Thanks a lot, guys. Good afternoon. Well, this will wrap up the uh, restoration, the repair of this Lister engine with the Almond, A-L-L-M-A-N-D, generator. This may actually be from Lister and they private labeled it, I don't know. But let's go over a few of the things that were wrong. Hopefully, my friend sends me the video he took while I was playing with all this, to trying to get it running. Uh, I do know for sure that we went through, down below, I, I uh, brazed that problem. The uh, oil pan, oil sump was cracked because of water in the winter time, apparently. Uh, some of the wiring was undone. I had to figure out where the wires went. The oil pressure switch works now, so that will feed the electric fuel pump. The outlets, I've separated them. In the manual for the generator, they're actually paired up, but I wanted to make sure each winding worked, so we hooked up the lights to them. Didn't load them down a lot. They, they're good for about a kilowatt each. I only put 150 watts on them just to see that they work. Did not check the frequency, did not check the voltage. Uh, this is a permanent magnet generator or alternator. So uh, there's probably not a lot that can go out and probably nothing to adjust. If it, wor it works or it doesn't work. Um, as I said, I have oil pressure. You saw us bleed the fuel system. That was a bit of a pain in the neck. Uh, I had oil pressure up to 
here, the first fitting when I had diesel fuel in it, and it spit just ever so little up here with the diesel fuel, but I blew through that tube down to here to make sure that that was free, so when I did build oil pressure, I have oil flowing into this. Uh, the single diode on the other side to charge the battery, that was bad, I replaced that. Um, just a generic power diode, you know, 12 volts, 15 volts, whatever it is, not much. You know, it's pro and this thing can't put out a lot of current. That's probably a 15 amp, 60 or 120 volt diode, so that's, that's plenty good. Um, alternator works, don't know about the hour meter, don't care. So, this works, the enrichment works. The regular works. This is this is rich. This is normal run, and holding it all the way down is stop. So that works because that controls the fuel pump. Apparently, it's the stroke on the fuel pump. Um, oil looks pretty good. So all in all, I'm really happy. It it did run. Ran really good. A little noisy. Don't have much for a muffler. That's that's. That's the light tower installment. Uh, as far as the lister goes, this guy is all set. Uh, I, it sounded great. Cranks over good. Uh, didn't try to hand crank it. I don't have the hand crank. I have no inclination to do that at all. So that's it. Uh, if you stuck around all three parts, God bless you. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect it to go through parts. I uh, was getting a little discouraged because I kept finding little things. But now that it's working good, uh, I can get on to the use of it in the light tower. If you stuck it out this far, thank you very much. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. You give me a thumbs down. I would appreciate you telling me why, although you know, if you give me a thumbs down, you give me a thumbs down. Um, some of the stuff I do, or the way I do it, <laughs> just isn't the way people want it done. But that's okay. I can live with that. Uh, I have to please myself first. My wife second, or the other way around. Uh, share it. Subscribe. Talk about it. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to put out some more. Now that Good weather's coming. Hopefully I'll be getting to more of my projects quicker. So thanks again and uh, have a good afternoon, evening, morning.